All right, Legends, welcome back to the Mason Cox Show. Now, there were three games over the weekend, you could almost say, that went down to the wire. So some absolute thrillers we're going to talk about. Now, Braden also thinks that the VFL is trending a little bit better than the IFL right now. We're going to break that down and what he means. And lastly, I'm going to give you the review that you never asked for. I'm talking cricket, ladies and gentlemen. You best believe it. It is a heck, a heck of an experience over the weekend. But without further ado, let's get into the podcast. All right, let's get into it. Brayden, welcome. Oh, g'day, Mace. How's your weekend been? It's been good. But before we get into all that, we've got to talk about something. We released a little bit of something big last week. We released the merch, and I must say a massive, massive thank you to everyone that has bought the merch, everyone that is enjoying the merch. And if you do get it finally this week, it's all coming out. It's all getting shipped out at the moment. If you get it this week, tag us in it. We want to see the fans wearing the merch. It's exciting. I've seen a couple start to roll out, and uh, it's it's very exciting. Every time we get a little tag that says, finally got my merch. Mm. I was so happy with how many people like got on the merch because we did take a long time to get around <laughs> to doing it. Before we move on from it, though, there's only one week left with this special logo, so mm. make sure you get it because it's the OG logo. So if someone sees you wearing this logo, it's not going to be available after this. They know you were there since the beginning. They know you're an OG to this podcast. So you got one week left to figure it out, the carltondraft.com.au. Check it out. We'll put all the links in the bar and everything else, but it is some good, good merch. Real collector's item. Hey, on sell it. Not that I'm saying on sell it. Let's get into the podcast. Let's go. Clang of the week. What do you got for I hate to do this to one of your teammates, no. Mace, but my hey. clanger of the week, and it's about as funny a moment as oh, you can no. get. So I got to touch on it. Ash Johnson. Hey, now he's uh, been playing in the AFL. Well, mm. his first game back in the in the VFL. Yeah. Uh, a bit of an embarrassing moment. Now Collingwood got the job done against the Dolphs. Fins mm, up for fins the Dolphs. The Dolphins. <laughs> well, fins went down on the weekend to uh, Collingwood, but your teammate Ash Johnson. Took a mark, contested mark, mm. good one, on the good wing mark. right yep. in front of the, the Dolph bench. Hey, uh, they've got the bongo drums over there on the hill. You know, they get into you. They get into you down there in front. Well, his opponent that he took the mark on mm. went over the boundary, fell over, and kind of ate, ate a bit of shit. Yep. Anyway, Ash Johnson looks back, shows him the ball. Real like oh. showboaty here. I took the mark, mate, and off I trot. Goes running down the wing, goes to take a nice little bounce. Slips out from underneath him. Oh, no. Doesn't do the whole Pendle's lace down trick that he mustn't have got taught that one yet. Skidded <laughs> out from underneath him. He's fumbling around, picks it up. By then, he, one of his opponents, Chase oh, tackles no. him down, pulls his shorts down around oh. his knees, <laughs> and he gets oh, done yeah. for holding the ball. <laughs> oh, it was just everything... It just kept getting worse, yeah. step by step. It was one of those real uh, file it under instant karma, I reckon. Look, I'll say this. I've had a few clangers in my lifetime, Ash. Don't worry. They happen, okay? They happen, and they will forever live on in infamy. But I've had some absolute clangers down there in Frankston. There's been a few of those in my first early years of playing. So happens to us all. I will say this, though. The game was, I mean, Pretty much over. It was 80 to 22 whenever this happened. So it's a bit of fun. There's a bit of wrestling and grappling and fights going on down there in Frankston between the Dolphins and the old Magpies. And, you know, maybe he was just keen to let him know who's actually winning on the scoreboard. You actually reminded me I had a clanger once Jeez. in Frankston. I went down to cover the VFL. Might have had a couple of beers the night before. Mm, as you do. Uh, and forgot the base plate for the camera. So I had oh, the wow. camera, the tripod, no base plate. Can't attach the two. So what do I do? I go into the trainer's room, get a bit of the tape, and I tape the camera to the That's tripod. Huge. You know, you've got to be resourceful out I'll there in this, Frankston. One of my biggest clangers in Frankston, I did play on from the goal square and got it smothered. Oh. Did have that old Heath Shaw about it. Were you <laughs> up at like least? a librarian. Like Ash Johnson had a clanger, but you're 60 points up. Yeah. Um, no, we were, I think we were up by a fair bit, but uh, fortunately for me, it wasn't a televised game. So there's no vision of that even living on in infamy. So it's, it's between you, your coaches and your teammates. And a few teammates. Darcy Moore continually reminds me of it. What's your clanger, mate? Uh, my clanger, it's unfortunately on myself. Now I had the experience and this is because we love, we love this man. We've talked about it many times on this podcast and it baffles me, absolutely baffles me that this club has not signed this man for another contract. Ken Hinckley. Ken Hinckley. We love the Kenny. Oh, I love we it. love the Kenny on the podcast. And, you know, they were coming into Melbourne as we were leaving Melbourne, right? So we kind of cross over each other in the airport, you know, walking through the gates. And I'm walking past and Ken's walking past the other way. And we've kind of known each other over the years because they kind of recruited me from the very beginning and I didn't go there. But um, 
Ken and I have known each other and it's kind of like this, you know, hey, how you going? You know, what's up? You know, and we, we go there and he comes up with me and he goes with the, and a lot of people probably experience this, you know, whenever someone like you, you want the handshake, but then they kind of tilt the hand up and you're going, oh, we're going to dap each other up here. I didn't see it. I went for the handshake, you know, thinking, you know, he's a bit of hierarchy to me. He's a head coach, you know, a bit of respect, right? Ken goes, boy, dab me up. You're one of the boys. <laughs> And then it became this awkward, and everyone's experienced this, the old awkward handshake in between dap, and it was all my fault. I should have just, and I would have had a great story coming in here and be like, yo, me and Ken dapped it up over the weekend, bro. <laughs> but no, unfortunately, my dumb ass decided to try to go for the handshake and just screwed the whole thing up. That sounds worse than the Ash Johnson clanger. That's, it is, it is. And it was an embarrassing moment for me because I'm usually the dab and I'm like, oh, yes, I've got this. Genuinely a phobia of mine is handshake situations, yeah, or not knowing where situation. to go. No, but like from the country, mm. I feel like everyone there has one play. It's the stock standard handshake. The only thing about it is how hard you can go. It's all yeah, about it's pressure. Power move. So they try to break all your fingers. I'm fine with that. That's better than my, I mean, am I dapping yeah, you up? Man, and exactly. sometimes I force them back into like, they'll come in full dap mode or like the, you know, the Arnold Schwarzenegger power <laughs> clap in the middle. And I get a real high elbow when I come in and I force oh, them you back. you force them back to lateral. Force them back. <laughs> That's the only way. The real spanner in the works was like, I was trying to figure out, that would be fine if there was only those two options. But yeah. then, yeah, I got mates now from the country that bring it in, give me the big uh, hug. Too. There's too many options. It's too many options. Well, I just want to apologize, Ken Hinckley. I will, next time we need to maybe just you know, be on the same page. I'll come in real go, hey, dap me up, my brother. Dap yeah. me up. And I'm going to come in one of these days and be like, you know what, Ken and I, because I think we play port in a few weeks. Maybe I'll go dap them up for the game, you know. I say, "What's up? You know, fix this issue we got." And that's, I think, you got to come in from like ten meters yeah, away with your, with your hand position <laughs> established for the dap or the handshake or whatever it is. Nothing would make me happier to get that good connection, just that pop. I know what pop. you're gonna do because you know now he'll be thinking handshake, I you'll know. be thinking dap. What if you come in with the hug? Oh, <laughs> the third option. He's got the third option. Well. Ken, if you're listening, we're dapping it up next time, mate. Oh, yeah. I, th I think you're hugging it up if I get my way. All right. Let's get into this little nugget because you're saying, am I getting this right, that VFL was better than the AFL this week? Mace, the VFL is always great, but the AFL was particularly shit this weekend. Oh. Now, there were some great moments in the VFL. One, Tipper. Tipper. He uh, kicked the match winner, albeit a behind. But Good after the siren for Essendon, very rare Essendon mm. win after the siren. Very rare. And you'll hear more about that soon. And then we had Collingwood going up against the Dolphins, the Finners, as we already touched on oh, with AJ. But your teammate, Guinea, he's always in and under. Just, Jeez, you know, please. he doesn't bring it on himself. This one was very interesting. It was a free kick was given to uh, Collingwood. Yeah. After the fact, a bloke from the, the old Dolphs just oh, copped Guinea high. And then, for some reason, he took offense to the fact that he got guinea high and then just started a fight, which was, oh, you know, geez. everyone jumped in and uh, it was an all out down there at um, at Franger. All I can do is put myself in guinea's shoes, right? Like week on week, if he's having to play VFL, he's going to be the target. Not just because he's a great player, but also because of the media attention that comes with him, right? And guinea is one of those, you know, he's a bit of a shit stir. We all know that, right? He, you know, maybe pricks people the wrong way. But... Guinea's a good player, and him having to play in the VFL at the moment, like it's a tough team to crack into. So he's um, he's having to do it, and I've I've had I've been there many and many a times, and it's not an easy thing to do. But it would be even more frustrating knowing that every single week you're going and playing, you're going to be a target for the opposition. It would be very similar between you and him, because a very lot much, of yeah. a lot of these VFL teams get their their chance to have a swing at the big time at the big Mason yeah. Cox coming down to the VFL. You would have copped a lot of, you know, biffo, bit of jumper tag and pulling, punching. Yeah, but like I'm the biggest car on the ground usually. Like Guinea's not the largest human. Like I remember whenever I played, I can't remember it was I think Preston last year. I was playing Preston Oval and there was like six guys that were ripping me. It was essentially Adelaide like it happened there. It was six guys at one point. I had got my shirt ripped in half. I was old Brandon Maynard just chest out. How's it going, ladies? And then and then, um, yeah, and that's just like, it's one of those things. Whenever you're an AFL player that's had to go back and play in the VFL, you become a target for the opposition because you're one of the best players in the team. Therefore, they're going to try to take you out. And that's what's happening to Kenny at the moment. It's got to be frustrating, put myself in his shoes. I can imagine, and I've been there, it is. 
But the only thing you can do is continue to play well, and hopefully the uh, opportunity comes up for you to come back into the AFL. Well, there were some highlights of him from that same game, smothering, mm-hmm. chasing, tackling, pressure. It was great to see. Yeah. Uh, one point he tackled so hard, his headband came off. That's always Wee. good. You know you're really trying hard when the headband comes off. Now, I don't know how many of uh, the Australians out there, I definitely don't know how many uh, of the Americans out there have yeah. been watching this little game of cricket called The Ashes. Oh, zero Americans is the answer to that one. Uh, the game of the, sorry, the, I don't know, the, the series of the century uh, for the, smallest trophy award. Yeah, well, maybe it looks small to you, Mace, because you're so large, but it's one of the biggest trophies. You're saying size doesn't matter? Size (laughs) doesn't matter, Mace. That's what I base my whole life around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Now, it's it's been a very interesting series so far. Now, what did you see over the weekend? Because controversy Mm. was coming out of every orifice. Obviously, whenever you think of cricket, the name Mason Cox comes to your mind. Oh, yeah. Says, I would love to have his dissection of the game. Right? Cox always I'm on give my it mind, to you. Mate. I'm gonna, <laughs> Cox is always <laughs> oh, I'm going to give you the dissection of what happened in the cricket over the weekend, right? So to start off this whole thing, we've got Stark, right? Stark goes, catches the ball. And if this is a backyard cricket game, this is any other game of cricket, right? That's a catch. And it's an out. But he falls to the ground. And I guess like... You know, a blade of grass touches the red ball and all the palms are out there going, oh, excuse me, according to the rules, this does not count. And Stark and everyone else in the Australian team is like, get fucked. Anyway, well, karma's a bitch, right? Let's fast forward a little bit, right? So all of a sudden we've got Johnny Bearstow, and I'm probably saying it wrong, Bearstow, whatever the hell his name is. He's batting for England, and, you know, he's he's being a bit cheeky, right? He's leaving his crease, and that's just not, you know, you can get penalized for that, and he soon found out. The wicket keeper, Kerry, for Australians, right? He sees him. He's leaving the crease. He's being a bit of a prick, and he's going, you know what? I'm just going to lob this. He So old Barstow leaves the crease, and old Kerry lobs the ball at the wickets, and he just snatches the edge of the post and the wicket falls off. And everyone almost goes silent. Because not everyone's quite sure what the hell just happened. And that is an out. And based on my very extensive cricket knowledge, he can't leave the crease. And if he does, and the ball hits the wickets, you're out, Barstow. Therefore, all of Australia cheers. All of England loses their shit. The internet blows up. All the English are saying, you're terrible sports people. You know, you're a terrible person. I can't believe you do that. That's not in the, you know, that's not in the nice, nice the spirit, the spirit of the game, right? All this stuff. But then if you look back, right, you look back, let's rewind a little bit. There was a moment. The English tried the same shit. Just their wicket keeper or their wicket keeper couldn't hit the wickets. Therefore, it's a bit rich. The old palms for saying that, you know, it's not in the spirit of the game to do this whenever it's in the rules of the game. And you know what? Out trenches spirit rules that <laughs> you make the old game by. Which is very funny because all the old blokes up in the long room are the guys that write oh, the bloody rules, mate. Gosh, so. And they were livid. Oh, the freaking MCC of the Lord ZC, so whatever the LCC, or the hell you call them, the old white dude club, they were pissed. The old folks, huh? Oh my gosh, I looked at the vision of that. There was no diversity in that room whatsoever. It was straight out of um, Game of Thrones, like the shame, oh, shame, yes. shame. They were like, cheats, cheats, cheats. Oh, ridiculous. And it was ridiculous. I just, I just couldn't believe it. And it's a whole bunch of people that I'm assuming are probably named Arthur Long, bottom the fourth or some shit like that, you know, being all upset with no hair and you know just aging and just saggy as fuck and the australians are walking up the stairs and they've just got this cheeky smile on their face because they know the whole place probably hates their guts at the moment for what they just did and in their mind they're probably going well you know you kind of invented this game so you can be mad at us but you know, we're following your rules so get stuffed uh, it was just so sweet just the nectar of you know One day before, they're saying, oh, it's not the rules. It's not the rules. Then one day later, it comes back and bites them on their big old flappy ass. It was great to see. They were chanting the whole time. They were chanting after the game. They were booing the players after the game uh, and singing the same old chant. 
Uh, same old Aussies, always oh, cheating. Shooting. Yes. And the same old Aussies, always winning mace, 2 0 up in the series. We're, I'm, I feel like we're going for a whitewash here. Go for the big old 5 0. Take it home. 2 0 in England. That's got to hurt. Home field advantage. You've lost both, both matches. Oh, that's got to sting a you little bit. I think they would be used to it, though, because they suck, mate. They wow. suck so much. Well, that's about as extensive my cricket knowledge that I know. Uh, let's move into the football, right? Thursday night, Brisbane v. Richmond up at the Gabba. 134 mm. Brisbane put on the board, which is, you know, we saw some big scores this weekend and some terrible footy. Now, Joey <laughs> Danaher kicked five. Five goals. Oh, uh, shark doo doo. <laughs> I think that's a sign. I think he's the baby yeah. baby shark. Baby shark, that's what it is. Uh, but Young, one of his goals, Young from Richmond, did his best to yeah. like save the ball going through the goal line, but unfortunately stopped it dead on the line. And Joe almost it's like, like waltzed in. Yeah, he just walked up and was like, "Can I kick this <laughs> goal?" And then just socketed it straight at the heads of the cheer squad. <laughs> there were some people there just saw their life flash between their eyes or before their eyes, just like. That was a pelt. It wasn't just like a chip shot. He launched that thing into the cheer squad. It was very interesting, but five goals for Big Joey D. Richmond, you know, a couple of excuses. They don't have Dusty or Prestia, two mm. important players to their team. Now, I don't know if you have one of these players that plays without a mouth guard. I know I'm not suggesting that Charlie mm. did, but God, you got to protect your teeth. 20 or so seconds into the game, Charlie comes in off the line, first center Screaming bounce, him. and just smashes his face into Trent Cochin. I'm not sure if he's still got all the teeth left inside his head, but it didn't look very good. He might just have his teeth fall out, and then he just goes down to the rooms, I think, after that, and they're like, we'll just put the mouth guard back in. We'll fix this maybe post-game. I'm not really too sure. That freaks me out when they're just like, they stick them back in. They're like, I don't know. We'll suss it later. Because, well, yeah, I guess what are you going to do? Oh, there's nothing you can do. It's like, I mean, I, I don't even know. Can you get your teeth put back in? I'm not really too sure. But Brisbane does get the win, get the massive win. And they're a fortress up there. They don't lose up at the Gabba. I'm telling you, they're a good, good team at home. They're starting to look scary. And it's a good time of the year to start ramping it up. Now, unfortunate news for Richmond. Uh, short, pulled up short with a hamstring, mm. which, you know. It's, no long bombs from him soon. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's not looking good. for. Like, they were, they were coming off a bit of momentum. And yeah. this kind of put a halt to it straight away. So... Um, it was, it, yeah, it wasn't a great game for them, but you know, hopefully they can come back, reset and go again. Let's jump into the next one. And I reckon this was this is your favorite, wasn't it? This was one of the worst games that oh. I've ever witnessed with what my eyeballs. Worst games. It was so for the expectation coming in, both teams outside the eight trying to get in. It's a grand final, grand final rematch. rematch, you know, all these things that just build it up to be what you expect as a good game. And it couldn't have been any worse. Oh. Sydney really dominated throughout yep. the whole game, but kept Geelong in it just by their putrid goal kicking. It was disgusting. It was, it was an aggressive adjective. It was the worst. I, I actually can't remember a time where I've seen more wasted opportunities at goal from simple places. Yeah. The one I think of is the Hickey up front. He'd be replaying that in his mind a hundred times over. But there was so many. So Hickey missed it. I give that a part. That was at the top of the goal square. He's a ruckman. Big boys. Big boys, not great goal kicking. There's a long way from hand to foot. Yep. Stuff Agreed. happens. <laughs> um, Wind. <laughs> Wind happens. But they had a couple of shockers. Uh, I would say that Fox running in to an open goal to win the game and he Whoa. kicks it into the post. The Crowd couldn't comprehend what they just saw and just went into a state of shock. They were like all up and about cheering before he even kicks it because you can't miss it. Yeah. My nan would kick that. Oh, She's been wow. dead for 10 years, Be mate. Nice, like, I don't know how you don't kick that. Anyway, they don't, they don't win because of stuff like that. But, yeah, the whole crowd just went silent and kind of like, well – I don't think anyone deserved to win. And that was the only shining light for the rest of the competition was a draw is not good enough for either of these teams. They need wins, They're mate. Both punished. So they both essentially lost to this. Now, there was a bit of a trend through the whole round that no one wanted eighth spot. Most teams mm. that could snag a spot, that eighth spot, ended up losing over the weekend. And yep. this was just another situation where teams didn't want it. There was no clutch moments. There was no clutch players. There was there was nothing 
to want in this game. There was no thing that was redeeming. There was not one redeeming feature in this entire game. Jeez, really loved this game. Well, the problem was I sat there on the couch. You would have been hyped because you're thinking Sydney, right, got smashed in the grand final. Home game, rematching on. This is their opportunity. Everything is aligning for them to have a good good outing versus Geelong. Then there's a tie. A few misses here and there. Not the greatest skill execution throughout the whole game. It's like the most anticlimactical thing ever. You spend three hours sitting on the couch with no memorable moments. And then at the very end, no one kicks a match winner. They kick a behind to draw the game. So there's not one moment out of the game that you get to take away and go like, geez, it was a well-executed, exciting game with moments throughout. It just happened to end in a draw. It sucked from start to finish and ended with no redeeming feature at all. Well, I've got a way to fix this, Braden. So I think we take out the tie. I think we just play pig with three players, play pig, and whoever wins the pig game wins the game. I don't so you got to get your sharpshooters in front of goal. You pick it out. It's kind of like a penalty shootout in football or soccer, whatever the hell you call it. It's like that for goal in AFL, no more draws. You know, sometimes you go like, well, neither team like deserve to lose. Mm. There's There's draws like that. There's draws like this where both teams deserve to lose. <laughs> but yeah, I, maybe a bit of excitement. I like the idea of, you know, putting th- three on three in the goal square and it's like a sumo match. You got to like push oh push people out and whoever's left, that's that's the winner. Who's your best person at sumo match in the AFL then? Well, you got to put your big boys in. Tom Hawkins. Tommy, yes, Tom Hawkins. He does it in the ruck Impossible all, all day. Oh, man. I'm trying to think of someone else to be, oh, Shane Mumford would have been impossible back in the day. Big boy, who are you nominating? Who's your three? I'd probably go Maynard, Checkers. Isaac Quainer. Bang. Isaac Quainer oh. would be real good, I feel like. Absolutely. He'd, he'd unit. really get you because he's so quick. He'd, just like, he'd have some move that's just like some ridiculous move to throw you on your back. He's And he doesn't lose one-on-one. So well, if it AFL, came down to him v. someone, he's going to win it. AFL, take notes. Sumo wrestle in the goal square. Last, <laughs> last one standing. That's how you fix the tie. Now let's head over to what we all knew was going to be a bloodbath. Adelaide v. North. At Adelaide. Not an easy task mm. by any stretch. North turned up. They were in it for the first probably half of the game, which yeah. is... I. Th- it continually I, happens. I think that's enough. If, if I was a North supporter, you take out little wins, you see what your players are doing, looking for the young guys coming through, and you, you take a solid half of footy against Adelaide at Adelaide Oval. Yeah, Adelaide at Adelaide Oval is a team, like I said this before, Adelaide's going to make it into the eight, I think. And for them to be playing at home, they play on that deck so well. So North Melbourne, to be even in the game at halftime, they continually show up week after week. Yes, they might not be getting the wins on the board, but they are showing their supporters they actually care. No matter how, you know, no matter what the odds are against them as far as the betting odds, they continually are there showing up saying, we're not going to go down without a fight. And I think um, Clarko looks like he's going to start transitioning yes. back into coaching, which That'd is great. I- exciting for them. Now, Rankin kicked five. I don't know what we got to... Um, oh, the Rankin file they always go with. The but, Rankin file. <laughs> it's good either. But um, yeah, he kicked five. Tex still on top of the Coleman after kicking three. You probably wouldn't be happy with three. I reckon Tex is going to win the Coleman this year. He took someone's free kick. Did you see this? He took someone's free kick from like the 50 meter on the boundary essentially and then just like ran like five, 10 meters in, kicked one from like the corner. I was like, this man's a freak. Now one interesting stat that came out of the game. Uh, I saw this on Reddit. Ben Mackay. This would be good. <laughs> which is, uh, this is kind of brutal. I uh, feel bad in yep. many ways. But Ben Mackay, he's played for seven years, 63 games. He's He's had seven wins. Seven. Total. One win a year. Yeah. Oh, that is so rough. Well, he's currently on zero for this year. Oh. And he's had another year where he was on zero. 63 games. So you started in 2016. Yeah. Him, 2017. So imagine only winning only seven, winning seven in that time. That's hey, it's a credit to his <laughs> adversity. That's Let's re- say that. That's resilience. That's right resilience there. 101. So um prayers up for uh Ben McKay. Hopefully well, I think they'll get a win by the end of the year for sure. At least one. They're playing oh, good games. They've just been so unlucky on a few situations and then, you know, come up against some tough opponents. We'll talk about later in the podcast what West Coast almost did to St. Kilda. I mean, I'm telling you, one of those experiences, they'll get the dub. There's a lot of almost, though, with these with a couple of these teams. So mm. 
Western Bulldogs v Frio. Another one where Frio, unfortunately, couldn't get it done for that eighth spot. Uh, yeah. But the Bulldogs the looking the bloody goods at the moment. They're a very good team. We're playing them this weekend on Friday night thriller. We're back on the Friday nights. Like, fuck. That time. Sundays can get stuffed. And uh, it's going to be a really interesting game. They're uh, they're on a bit of a hot streak in the moment, and they're a very, very good team. Well, one player in particular that you need to look out for is Jamara Eugle Hagen because he's arrived. He's here. He was massive in this game. Four goals, four massive contested marks, big hangers, and then eight score involvement. So he's doing it all around the joint. Uh, it's good to see him really start to flourish because we all knew that he could be this dangerous uh, player like through his younger ages, showed a lot of promise, and now it's all starting to click. He had so much pressure on him, I feel like, in the first few years that, that maybe that got to him into it. I'm not really too sure, but like I feel like we overhyped Jamara at the very beginning. And it's like, let him just play. Let him just settle himself in the IFL. Let him like get into it. And now he's really hitting his straps. It's the curse of the tall forward. That, yeah. Everyone loves the tall forward. They love the big key. They want to see him succeed and they rip apart games. So that's why they get paid the big dollars. So they come in we with- get paid- Not you. Okay. Oh, I, was like, <laughs> I was like, what? I've been screwed here. Big key forward. <laughs> not- yeah. Tall key forward, big key forward. But um, no, they, they always come in with tons of pressure. We had Travis Cloak earlier on the yep. podcast. Go back and listen to that if you haven't. Great chat. Talk about pressure. He Love had it man. week in, week out. Oh, All yeah. of these guys, Buddy, would have had tons of pressure. Early draft pick coming through. Yeah. That uh, it, But then there always seems to be a moment where it clicks for him. Yeah, and then they just rip apart sky's the competition. The Absolutely, sky's the limit. Well, another person I kicked four on the game was Walters. That man's having a hell of a year. There was always the knock that he kind of focused on free kicks and stuff like that, where I've yeah. been watching a fair few Frio games lately, and for the most part, he's got that out of his game. And really? now he's just gone back to he – was, he was winning games off his own boot like a few years ago, Yeah, and we all knew that he could do it, and it's good to see that form is coming back well and truly because he, he took this game by the scruff of the neck for a small period of time for Frio, kicked two goals back to back to get them right in it yeah. uh, before they drifted out of the game. But, you know, he can only do so much. He's they're, pulling his weight. There's no doubt about that. They're always rippers too. Now, an ex-teammate of yours, Caleb Poulter. Pulse? The yeah. mullet man himself. The man. Well, he loves of, a TikTok video. Of course he went to the Bulldogs. Uh, they love a mullet over there. And he played his first game after being picked up in the mid-season draft by the Very Bulldogs. Quickly. Very quickly played a game, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, straight in. And I feel like that's what these mid-season picks do. They get picked they up for, for like a very players, specific but... purpose and they yep. slot straight in. Uh, did you see any of this game? Did you see Poulter running around there, setting up a couple of goals? Yeah, it was good to see him back out there. He's um, He lived with Jack Chris for a long time. Um, and I think he's only recently moved out, him and his missus. And um, Paul's is a bit of a, a quiet but hilarious guy. Like he, he put some, oh, some absolute perlers, I think, as you say, on the uh, social media. And uh, he was the butt of some jokes, let's just say, in some team meetings throughout last year. But uh, no, he's, he's a really good, cal- like really good kid, really good fella. And um, it's great to see him get the opportunity at the dogs and be able to have a resurrection of his career. Like it's, it's one of those things you see so many players get like pushed out of the system. And then it's great to have this midseason draft to be able to give another opportunity for these players who you know are talented, but maybe just didn't fit within the system. There's too many players within their role at that team and they got pushed out that you know, all of a sudden the role opens up at another team and they're able to get in. Keep your eyes peeled because he is starting a clothing label with your of course he teammate is. Bo McCreary. Is he? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Bo, I'm going to have some words with you tomorrow. <laughs> well, you've got to get some free hoodies or something. Now, one of your favorite players in the entire competition, oh, no. Nat Fife, uh, unfortunately subbed out of the game, injured again, the same foot problem that he had earlier in the season that's been keeping him out yeah. and not – Letting him like get back to his best this year. I just want to see him get a good run out. Everyone wants to see him like actually just dominate again. He's a freak athlete, and he shows. He's showed over the last few games. I feel like he's shown like a lot of these opportunities where he can do some pretty crazy stuff. But his body's just kind of you know given up on him at times. It's, it would be the most frustrating thing as a player is like you mentally want to do something, but your body doesn't allow you to. And uh, that's kind of where he's at. But another person that played really well, and we said we'd call these people plumbers, right? You get fifty taps in a game as a ruckman. You're a plumber. So plumber of the week goes to Sean Darcy, the big fella. He's back from the hamstring injury. A few weeks in the game, he's going, boys, 
I'm taking over the middle. 50 taps. You boys are plumber this week. It's so good to see the big units getting around there. And, you know, contract talks coming up. So he hey. starts to play well, as, as, as you all do. As you do, magically. <laughs> Let's jump into the Essendon Port game. Game of the week. Now, yeah, I would have to say this is game of the week. 74-78, Port's way, win after the siren, Dan Houston, 32 touches and the game winner. Now, this was more impressive for multiple reasons. Mm. Uh, Essendon with the dump kick outside of uh, defensive 50. Got to cover that. Dropped into Houston's arms uh, right on the 50 arc. Yeah. Utmost confidence in his ability. If that was me, oh, I'd be looking for the handball. See, I'll be looking everywhere. I'll be looking everywhere but the goals. No chance of kicking that bomb from 50. Quick and back just, off the he mark. He just was like... Oh, didn't even look for the options. He was like, nah, I got this. Don't worry, boys. Let me settle the game. The only thing is he's got to know that there's 44 blokes or whatever standing mm. inside Ford 50. The, the whole thing was, you know, clogged right up. I, I think- must say this also. It was wet. So this ball is probably 20 kilos also, and he still has the confidence to go, yeah, I'm about to launch this thing 60 meters. And for all those that have ever played local footy out there, it's like <laughs> kicking a bloody rock. So he's gone back, didn't even look around, just took it back in his swagger, wanted the moment. Cuts to the yeah. bench, our boy Kenny Hinckley, big beam and smile he on his face. He was hyped. He was ready. He was, yeah. I think he knew. He was like, Dan Houston's got this. We got the dub. Well, he bloody knew that he was a chance because he's a cannon of a kick. Goes back, kicks it long. Everyone groups up on the line and it gets touched over the line. Goal for Port Adelaide. They win the match. One, you know, unsung hero out of all this. Uh, well, he actually, he's been, you know, his praises have been sung quite a lot early this week. The goal umpire oh, on the line. Photo. Hilarious. He's getting crunched by about, you know. There'd be 20 boys, like 20, 20 blokes. Men just all on top of him. And he's like kind of shoving some out of the way and he's like, he doesn't want to miss it. He's, you know, employee of the month material. Yes, he is employee of the month. He's just like, he's got his, the best part is the gold camera still shows him in mint like position. He's just like. Prime vision to the ball too. Just on the line. He knows look his it job. Up, pick the gap in the, in the pack and. Caesar goes across the line. They always call for these things. They go to you the, have to, the third and it arm. was only like a foot over the line. So you talk about how close it is, and just that one little foot, maybe of you know, maybe fumbles it and goes back. Whatever it is, like he was right on his limit. The fact that like Houston went back and just put a hundred percent into it because we mm. saw one earlier this year. Sydney, uh, was it Sydney Geelong or whatever when it was dropped? Sh- no, it was a Sydney Port again. Drop yeah. short on the line. Yeah. Oh, man. So Sydney Port and didn't really quite kick through it. Only went 30 metres, dropped short, didn't make the distance. Oh, Houston wasn't having that problem. Not he goes back, kicks right through it, launches himself off the ground and skyrockets the ball 51 metres. Oh. Gets across the line. What a great win for uh, the Port Adelaide Football Club. Kenny, Jigger Joy. Yeah, Jigger Joy. It was so good seeing him. He was hyped again. It he was, was hyped again. It was back up and about. Kenny Hinkley turns around. He always tries to pump the crowd up. Come on, get up. I think that's what he's actually trying to look at the camera and he's saying to Koshy, you know, get those get, numbers up. Get, get those numbers, numbers up. I don't know. Put another year on the contract. Now, and I will say this. Kenny Hinkley, I think, is enjoying his football more than I've ever seen him enjoy it. Well, it helps when you win. Yeah, of course. But I mean, like, I think his, his – I feel like whenever I see him out there, he just – he has so much more of a smile on his face than I've seen in previous years. And it just, I love it, you know? He's this little fella that just, just grinds it over there in Adelaide, for Port Adelaide, and he's getting success finally now, and he just seems like he's really enjoying the moment. Just got a bit of weight off his shoulders. It must be good. I, I, I feel so good for Kenny. It's so good to see. Now, another thing that I saw on Reddit. Uh, this is a Reddit pod for you. Uh, just, you know, really sifting through. Really into it this week. Uh, now, Essendon. Not a very no. good history of uh, having goals kicked against them after the siren. Ooh. Now, in recent times, oh. <laughs> Gary Rowan yeah. took a mark, goal square, kicked the goal. Not great. <laughs> Jamie Alley, <laughs> great feeling. teammate of yours, yeah. goes back, kicks the goal after the siren, clutch ice in his veins. Yeah. Now, Houston, after the siren, goes back, kicks the goal, wins the game. To the track. Essendon, on the other hand, don't really do that to many other teams. Now, the yeah. last time that Essendon kicked a goal after the siren to win the game was back in 19... 
13. What? Round 16. This is still, I don't even know how they have these stats still. One of your favourite players, Jimmy Gordon. Oh, Jimmy boy. Against one of your favourite teams, University. Ah, oh, University. What University? There's only one in Australia at that point. Just call it University. 110 seasons ago. That's a long drought. That is a very, very long drought. And I think I'm pretty confident in saying this without going on Reddit and looking this up. That might be the only time they've won it after the siren. Yeah, well, you would say that. We're not, we're not known for our facts. Or, um, but yeah, I just thought that was a very interesting uh, little stat. That was a great little stat you found. Well done. <laughs> well, moving to the next game, we got Hawthorne versus Carlton. Now, Carlton smashed them. Mm. Carlton's back ever since the bye week. Telling you. They haven't lost for three weeks in a row now. huge. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's great to see a win. You know, what you don't want to see is this overhype because it just gets them back into the same situation. Have some joy. I'm not sure that the Carlton fans are buying into it, though, but if you listen to the commentators yesterday, they just beat the reigning premiers and they're going back to back to back. They just needed some love, okay? Two wins in a row, good. You beat Hawthorne, great. Mm. But, like, what does it actually mean? We can only wait to see if they can bring that pressure. That pressure was insane. Yeah, they brought the pressure. Hawthorne couldn't do anything, which is awesome to see. But now we just wait to see if they do it to a team that sits in the eight because they haven't done it. Well, time will tell. Time will tell. I'm tell- I think literally Carlton's biggest issue, if they can get their confidence back, they can beat anyone. So maybe they get their confidence back coming off two. Maybe they, maybe they, three s- weeks without a loss. Maybe they sat down and had those beers after the Gold Coast uh, win that we were saying that maybe that's a good idea. Turn around a few beers. Now, beers um, turn not around, might as well turn seams around. You know what I'm saying? Charlie subbed out just as a bit, you know, a bit of a tactical sub, rest yeah, up the big boy. Uh, him and we Harry. We need him to go into the Coleman race. We need to make this interesting. Yeah, I know. That's, I was, can't be subbing him out. I mean, like, Jez is out for two weeks because of concussion. You know, it's essentially Tex and Charlie at the moment. We need to have a bit of conversation. Competition there. Tex might just run away with it if they, 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 might. they don't take him off, the old boy. Well, they did rest him for that Ballarat game that was costly <laughs> that I bring up every other week. Uh, let's go up to TIO Stadium, which we all know, Alice Springs, up there in the Northern Territory. Northern Territory. Uh, Melbourne v GWS. This was not fantastic, but there's a reason. Yes. It was pissing rain. Who would it have was- thought it's pissing rain in the desert? The, probably the one day of the year it rains in the desert. That happens to be whenever the AFL's playing. Uh, you, wouldn't you just be so pissed off? You you finally go, you mark it in the calendar when you're one of these teams going, finally, get up, get some rays, you know, get some sun. Get some vitamin D. Heading into the depths of winter, it'll be great. Well, they go up there, it's eight degrees, pouring rain. Didn't help the game of football. 45 to 47, GWS's way, low scoring affair. Melbourne, extremely inaccurate. Don't blame them. Mm. GWS is probably more to the fact word quite accurate, which is impressive given yeah. the conditions. Now, Josh Kelly, the smooth operator that he Ooh, is, yes. kicked the match winner. Probably, I'd say on the run, from 60-65. Yep. It was a long bomb, and it only dropped like a metre short. No. But impressive goal to win the game for GWS, and I've been saying it for Pretty much the entire season, yeah. Mace. Yeah. And I'm just going to hold on to this. If they this. make the top eight, you're going to be sitting there going, I told you so. To everyone out there, you're going to be like, I told you so. Don't sleep on the Giants because they're competitive now. They're not the Ferrari they've always been. They're like a they're like a Jeep or a tank or something. Something like with a, a bit. Toyota, real trustworthy. Yeah, never uh, breaks down. Like the Hilux. They're just durable reliable, dependable. They're the Hilux of the competition now. And unfortunately, really bad news for Melbourne, Mm. who, you know, they've already had Oliver out for a number of weeks, which has been very costly to them. Now Fritch, Bailey Fritch, injured, going up in a marking contest and had like an ankle tweak, which didn't look good. Mm, Yeah, it was a a nasty little injury. And that's uh, it's one of the players that's going to be pretty important going into the back end of the season. So we'll see and wait until uh, the scans and everything else, see how long it's going to be, but not a good sign for it. West Coast, St. Kilda, Optus Stadium. I don't know. I thought it was going to probably, you know, continue on the trend. West Coast imploding on itself. Mm. All the media kind of coming in on them. And, you know, Perth itself, the bubble, the dome over there, the little cave, the other international, international yeah. uh, football club that you call it over there. I thought this was going to be much the same, but West Coast Eagles were incredibly competitive. They were the North Melbourne of this week. They just 
dropped the match to St. Kilda, 77 to 85. Saints with an almighty scare. I mean, like West Coast Eagles at home. I mean, like they had a run on us whenever we played them. So they, don't get me wrong, injuries aside and everything else, right? Like that's been a hell of an experience for them this year. But whenever they play home, they're always a chance. It was still a pretty tight tussle all the way through to the end. West Coast fans really appreciating it at the end of the first. you would. It was pretty much a standing ovation for just how competitive they were up until that point, which was great to see. Good fans over there. Maybe not Mm. for the away team, but good fans for the home team. I'll say West Coast Eagles are one of the most passionate fan bases. I'm not going to say who's the top five, but West Coast Eagles are definitely within the top five. Give us your top five. No no chance. There's going to be some people canceling me. (laughs) St. Kilda's only really going to grow from here. They got that youth through. They're not relying on a whole bunch of old talent. So it's it's exciting times for St. Kilda. I, for one, at the start, of the year did not see this coming. I thought grim yep. times ahead for St. Kilda in a full-blown rebuild, but still well and truly sitting inside the eight. It's I will great say to this. see. <laughs> your man, your man, Mr. Gatorade Bottle. <laughs> Rossi. Oh, Rossi. He's been sick. And there's vision of him after the game just coming out of the box, coughing up a lung. He's still struggling. I feel like a strategic at this point where he's like, I don't want to get it up near these fans. I'm just going to He's still dodging the media. That's his excuse, eh? Hey, I'd be doing the same thing if I was He realized it was a good tactic last week, and he's like, I can avoid everyone if I just cough. <laughs> so I just keep coughing. All right, now the game everyone wants to talk about because the big mace dog was playing. Gold Coast versus Collingwood. Bit of a smashing. Started, just blew him out of the water. It was it was not good. I think it was probably most of the way through the second quarter, I'm going to say, before Gold Coast actually kicked the goal. Put it on the board. Yeah, I remember one point during the game, I looked up and credit to our defense, it was like 10 points. I don't know if this was the th- second or the third quarter, but I just remember looking up and be like, holy smokes, like we've shut down their forward line. It was pretty crazy to see and they've got a pretty potent forward line at times. Yeah. So very impressive by your back line. Jeremy House He's dreaming so out of theirs, just looking good week after week. Uh, the game was a sellout. How was the crowd up there? That's what I was interested to know. It was good. The big question was whether or not they were going to break the record. Now, unfortunately, they didn't. I think they're out by about a thousand fans, but it was an awesome experience because even away, it feels like a home game. Well, yeah, (laughs) I I feel like it's a lot of the Collingwood uh, fans going, I just need some sun. Mate, it was like the first or second quarter they were doing the Collingwood chant already. You had some moments in this game. You came up against your old teammate, Jared Witts, going on to be a dominant force for the Gold Coast Suns, captain. Captain. Uh, So very good to see. How was the battle with Big Witter? Yeah, it's always good. He's one of their best players, and he really provides them first access in the middle. And you got Rowley in there eating the grass and getting down to the ball and uh, you know getting the ball forward for him. And he kicked two on the day, I think it was, and back-to-back to kind of get them back in their momentum and gain a bit of uh, scoreboard pressure. But yeah, Witz is one of those players. He's one of the dominant ruckmen of the league. Um, he was a person I think myself and Darcy Cameron know going up against him, it was going to be a, a tough day. And um, it's a credit to Witz. He's a heck of a player. What he's done up there for the Gold Coast Suns, now being a captain and being their Probably the person that you look at that's the most consistent in their team, I'd say. I think that's pretty easy to say that. He's just been really good. And um, yeah, it was, a, it was a credit to him. He played really well over the weekend. And um, for us, it was a, a challenge. Now, you owe someone an, an apology. Who's that? Taylor Adams. Yeah, I do. Because <laughs> Taylor Adams went back, <laughs> had a set shot, and he was going to kick that goal. He did, actually. He celebrated it. Well, did he? Because it got taken off him because someone gave away a free kick in the goal square, Mason. My bad. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. So, well, the thing is, I let up. He he looked me off. I wasn't too happy with that. So I went back to the goal square. And in my, you know, angry phase of uh, the game, I might have thrown one of their players and the umpire didn't like it, which I thought was interesting because I'm wondering if this is because I'm just a big man. And whenever you kind of like shove someone, it's like too much of a shove. I mean, like what's too much of a shove? Can't you shove off someone and then come at the ball? So I would argue you threw Mac Andrews to the ground. Yep. Right. So that's <laughs> probably truth. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get the point. He's he's a skinny lad. Hasn't really filled if it's out. Jared yet. Witz. Not a free kick. Yeah. Well, th- that's what I think. The umpire just looks at Witz. He goes, "Mate, you're a big boy. Get up. <laughs> get up. You know." <laughs> he didn't, like- they didn't happen to Witz in the game, but if it was him, I feel like it'd be a different determination. Hey, I'd like to see you try to throw Jared no Witz to the ground. He's no. a big, big, solid unit. Big unit. Now you had your moment back. A little bit, not too long after. Jerry Witt's holding. Love that call. Don't get those very often. So pretty happy with that. Right, pretty much on the goal square. Kick the goal. Um, yeah, and there's certain players, right? I, I talk a bit of trash. Don't get me wrong, right? 
And after I kick the goal, sometimes it get into people's ears. But because I'm kind of like mates with Jared Witts, it'd be like the same as like kicking a goal against Brody Grundy, right? I might try to get in his head, but like he knows well as I do that it's part of the game plan. And we're kind of mates at the end of the day. So it's kind of a bit of a laugh, right? And it's a free kick. So it's not like I outmarked him or anything like that. It was just kind of a, a call from the umpire. So it's not like you technically like showed him up by means. So after you kick it, you know, I went up and I was just like, I, I can't remember what I said, to be honest. <laughs> I just thought, yeah, tough shit, brother. <laughs> I think the most disrespectful thing you can do on a football field is pat someone on the head. <laughs> and they showed the Should replay. Oh, you no. gave him a pat on the head, a little ruffle of the feathers yeah, up top. I gave him like a little hug and then like behind the, you know, just a tap on the back of the head. Is it's like all, a- it's, I reckon it's the physical equivalent of champing someone. Wow. Rubbing their hair. Oh. I didn't rub his head, surely not. <laughs> I don't know. You were there. I can't remember. Uh, now. We'll have to go back. We'll have to we'll check, check the tape. I, I think you patted him on the head, but we'll move into Jamie Elliott's goal, which was incredible to see. Freak. It looks like he's got a one on one streaming towards the goals, uh, loses his opponent, looks like it's going to go through. Yeah. He taps it back. Footy IQ. And then sockers it through. I think it's kind of one of those things where you realize it's going out, right? And like a lot of bigs do this on the line, right? So you try to keep the ball in if it's not going to go, if it's going to go through the point, right? So as a defender, you try to punch it through the goals. As an off, like, offensive player, you try to keep it in play. So it's kind of almost like that, but the ball's running towards the line and he's going, well, either we take the behind or I give us an opportunity. Maybe one of my players is behind me that can kick the goal. So he's running there and then, as soon as the ball gets essentially almost like dead on the line, he like is able to get a hand to it and pull it back in and then like loops around the goalpost to come back to kick it again. And it, it was cool. It was cool on the day scene. And I was just like, oh, you can do that. Oh, okay. That does make sense. Like <laughs> he was like one of those, I think he talked about earlier. It was like, he had gone down to pick up the ball thinking he could like get the time and you know, be able to pick it up and kick it. But then halfway down, he realized the guy was about to just smash him. So he just kicked it off the ground and ended up kicking the goal. It was such a good, he couldn't have had a better tap. It rolled perfectly back around yes. towards the goals. Now, why didn't you think of this when you were against Harry Taylor? That's a great question. I was maybe only a year into my career. And, you know, I will say this. There's only one thing you can make this goal better. And I think it's a back heel by Jamie Elliott. I think mm. he should have done that. I reckon a little, you know, Ronaldo back heel would have made it even better. So you go give him that tip. Oh, no. One you- of your five goals, the bag you kicked on the weekend, old Billy. Oh, Bill <laughs> here's boy. A bit of, uh, here's a bit of how you can make it better. Ruffle him on the head. <laughs> oh no, he would whoop my ass probably. Now there was a little bit of biff. That, there was that we liked to I see. I missed it. <laughs> I was pissed. I was on the ground. I missed it. It was a weird one. They showed this like pixelated behind the goals, two hundred oh, meter gosh. away thing. Kind of looks like Tom Mitchell knocked uh, Anderson's mouth guard maybe out of his hand oh. or something, and then Anderson just flipped his lid. I Jeez. think probably because you you're getting flogged at this stage, so. Need to, I mean, it's like, you know, you need to get a bit of energy in it, you know? And it, he had a great game. Anderson had a, had an absolute blind. Game, yeah. So, you know, maybe you just got to let out some aggression. But I was pretty upset because essentially what happened in this moment was I was the other side of the ground and Bobby, I'm watching him and he just, the ball goes one bomb bomb and then it's like over the back and Bobby, I'm just like screaming. I'm like, just sprint. There's no one in the league that's going to be able to catch you. Just sprint straight. So he's just dead set going. And I'm like behind him trying to keep up, which just means that I'm essentially losing 10 meters per second <laughs> that he's running. And I get to the point where he kicks the goal and I go to celebrate with him. And I, this is like, it probably takes me five seconds. And I was probably even with him whenever we started this race. And I turn around, there's this huge biff in the middle of the ground. I'm like, oh, this is my moment. And I was like, Brayden Maynard the other week, like, do I go? Do I not go? Do I go? Do I not go? Took about three steps towards it. And then everyone kind of dissipated. I was like, come on, man. And that's what I was looking for. So I saw... You know, Tay Adams was in there. I was like, oh, that's oh, of good. Of course he is. Love that. Where's Braden Manor? And then I was like kind of flat. I was like, oh, mm. Bruz isn't there. You know, the, as the pack disperses, I realized that he's in and under <laughs> like the bottom. He, I don't know how he got there so quick, but he was like one of the establishing pack of mm. the uh, of the little brawl that they had going on, which Wild is- Maynard appears again. He's always in and under. Uh, now, Oleg Markov. Uh, Oleggy. One of the new- Collingwood teammates playing against his old side, Gold yep. Coast, kicked his first goal for the Pies awesome. against his old club. That would have felt good. It was from 52. So it wasn't an easy goal. He's, I mean, he's a backman, so it doesn't happen very often. And him, John Noble, and who else? Billy Frampton all kicked goals on the day, which are not people that you're probably thinking whenever going to a game. 
those are going to be some goal scores we've seen on the stat sheet. But Oleg kicked his first goal from 50, uh, and then to do it against his old team who dropped him would have been a great feeling. The sweetest of goals. Oh, this real dagger and just, oh. That was it for the the games. There was some mm. sad news uh, throughout the week. Matt Randell. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately passed during the week. What are your experiences, Matt? Uh, Matt was one of the first people I met. He was kind of in the recruitment team whenever I would kind of come to Collingwood. And he's a, he was a, a large man of Ruckman, you know, and he was very much a passion for the game. And um, he was unequivocally himself, right? So he always gave his opinion, you know, and it was, he didn't care whether or not you agreed with it, whether you disagreed with it, he was going to tell you straight. And that was something I very much respected about him. But um, he was an amazing person, I think, in those early years, you know, and those those people really kind of helped you through some of the tough times and gave you advice and, you know, showed faith in you and showed that you, uh, you know, you might be capable of, capable of doing something special. He was one of those people. And, um, you know, he, unfortunately with COVID and a few other things, you know, like it was, he got moved on. I hadn't really talked to him since for a while, but I always look back on some of those early days with such fond memories of him. And um, he was kind of, I guess, my first probably experience of a true Aussie like a person that just tells it how it is and tells you straight. And it was like, sometimes it was just direct as it could be. And um, that was just how, how he was. And he was just an absolute legend. And um, yeah, it's really sad news over the week. It was um, just kind of out of the blue. I don't know. You just, sometimes you kind of think everyone's going to live forever, you know? And then unfortunately these circumstances happen and um, we're all sitting there trying to, trying to deal with it now as a, uh, Retrospectively, he was one of the all time storytellers. Love oh, him. loved his story. Very good at telling him, too. He will be uh, sorely missed. Yeah, prayers up to his family, thinking of y'all. And um, yeah, hopefully, you know, it's going okay. And um, like I said, Matty Rendell is an absolute, absolute legend of the uh, the football world. Now, that's it for us. This that's week. it. That is it. Thank you, everyone, for listening in. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, now, well, the merch, we got to go back to this. The merch, you got a week left, people. Figure it out. I don't know. We'll figure out some kind of payment plan if you have to. I'm not sure if Afterpay works like this stuff, but figure out some kind of payment plan because this stuff's cheap. This is, like I said this before, like we are doing this at cost because we want to get as much gear out as possible. And this is a logo that's only going to last for this week only. This is the last week that we're going to have it out there. So make sure you go check it out, the CarltonDraft.com.au, uh, all in our bio and our links and everything else. So there's links there for you to be able to click to get to it. Um, different t-shirts, different colors, all that kind of stuff. Hats also included in that. And we will have more mer- merch coming out soon. Don't worry. But this is a special logo, special price for the OGs out there. And make sure you tag us. If you get your stuff, tag us. Thanks, everyone, for listening in. You're absolute legends. Thank you so much for the support. And uh, follow us, like, share, all that on the socials. And tell your mates. Tell your mates about the old Mason Cox show with Mason Cox and Braden Cox, the two Cox in a one pod. So many comments saying, like, I'm actually an Essendon supporter and I love this pod. I'm a Port supporter and I love this pod. Like, so many fans from other clubs. We're not just the Collingwood Football Club podcast. Mm. We're a AFL podcast and just a life podcast. Because Switzerland to the whole thing. So many lessons that you learn out of this, oh, just geez. little gems and, you know. Just like how to do a handshake. <laughs> <laughs> and it's free. It's all free. So free. <laughs> so free. But we're going to end it there. Thanks, everyone. Have an amazing day and we'll speak to you soon. See ya. Cheers.